In this video, we will address a few numerical methods to approximate solutions to initial value problems. So, we already discussed the Euler forward method. We did so in, well, the introduction to this uh, section 4 in a sense, and then we actually kind of looked at it throughout the first three videos, and we saw it is a one-step explicit method, we saw it was convergent of order 1, we also see it, we also saw in the previous video that it is not a stable, so this can lead to issues when we have a large T. Now, I would like to recall a remark that we made in the video when we, we talked about uh, the Cauchy Lipschitz or Pika Lindelof uh, theorem, and that was that if you look at this uh, equation here for all t and 0t, uh, y of t equals y uh, naught plus the integral between 0 and t of f s y of s ds, well, that was equivalent to uh, the ODE. Now, uh, this uh, equation, uh, if you look at what we're doing when we're doing z0 equals y0 and we're using the Euler forward method, what we're really doing is computing 1, that's, you know, that, 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 uh, that equation with the, with the integral here will be called 1 uh, in this slide and the, and the next ones. So that's really a way to compute 1, I mean the integral in 1, with the left point rectangle method. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the uh, left point rectangle method, or more generally, the methods to approximate the integral um, with, uh, with rectangles or um, uh, trapezoids or, or, or whatnot, then I suggest you watch the videos which uh, I put a link there. Uh, it, it's important that you understand, I mean, you should know that, and if you don't, then I, I suggest you, you, you watch this video. Uh, in any case, what I'm saying is that uh, by doing the Euler forward method, it's simply solving, I mean, basically uh, computing this integral uh, for one, uh, for equation one, using the left point rectangle method. So this leads to uh, asking the following question, what would happen if instead Instead of choosing the increment of the of the Euler forward method, I was to choose another one, which was f of t plus h over two, x plus h over two f of x t. Well, that would mean that the, the numerical method would be z n plus one plus one equals z n plus h t times the, the f, which is over there. And when it comes to the equation one, uh, you know, from, the, from my remark that I just talked about, uh, the, the integral, you know, uh, then it means that I'm computing it with the midpoint rectangle method. Okay? So what I'm saying is that the value y t n plus h t over 2 is somehow guessed by z n plus 1 half h t f t n z n. This numerical method will be called RK2 for Rung Kuta 2. Now, one could be, you know, could, could actually say, well, let me choose an increment function which will actually compute the integral using the right point rectangle method. Why not? So, in other words, the increment method would be a phi thx equals f t plus h x plus h f x t. Why not? Well, so instead of guessing uh, y t n plus h t, we just say, okay, well, it's y n plus 1. Okay, so, so what, what we're saying is that the scheme we have, the numerical method, is z n plus 1 equals z n plus h t f t n plus 1 z n plus 1. So, of course, at this point, what we need to do uh, is to solve for zn plus 1. We, we don't have zn plus 1, we have an equation uh, with zn plus 1 in it, so we need to solve for zn plus 1, which uh, means that we have an implicit method. Let me define the Euler backward method as the method obtained when zn plus 1 is zn plus ht ftn plus 1 zn plus 1, which obviously is an implicit method. And let me actually uh, just give you an example. Let's try to solve the 
uh, equation we solved earlier, you know, in the in section 4.1, we, we solved that, that equation, right, with the Euler forward method. Let's actually solve it with the, uh, solve it, I mean, uh, approximate the solution. Uh, let's approximate the solution now with the Euler backward method. Okay, so z0 equals 0, zn plus 1 equals zn plus ht exponential minus zn plus 1 plus tn plus 1. Let's get started. Uh, we'll consider a mesh on 0, 2 with the very same h, 0 0.5, exactly as, as we did for the Euler forward method, but let's do it now with the backward method. So z0 equals 0, uh, that's of course a no-brainer. Let's actually find now z1. So z1 will be 0 0.5, which is my, my h, times exponential minus z1 plus 0.25. And again, z1, uh, 1 is not an exponent here, it's a superscript. I mean, keep saying that because it's important not to get confused. So I need to solve uh, this equation. I won't be able to, find, to, to solve it explicitly, so I will use, um, you know, I mean, any method to, 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 to solve a very simple equation. I mean, you might know, you might know the Newton method or might know the uh, section. I mean, use what you want. Uh, basically, I even do it like numerically, graphically here. Here is the, um, the, the two curves, I mean, uh, z, uh, x, z1, and uh, 0 0.5 exponential minus x plus 0 0.25. Uh, and basically, it intersects for numerically, I can find the intersection at 0 0.541. So that's z1. So I found z1 to be 0 0.541. Now let's solve z2. Let's solve for z2, z2 equals 0 0.541 plus 0 0.5 exponential minus z2 plus 0 0.5. I solve this numerically. Again, I find a solution. It's z2 equals 1.193. So I got z2. And I keep going. Let's solve for z3. Well, z3 will be approximately uh, 2.01 actually uh, find uh, z4. Well, z4 again is going to be uh, computed numerically and I get 3.034. Okay, well, what, what I'm saying here is that I have approximated my uh, y on 0, 2. Uh, y of 0 is approximated by z0, y 0 0.5 by z1, and so on and so forth, uh, all the way to y2. Now, what is the behavior of the Euler backward method on the Dahlquist test equation, right, with a um, uh, lambda which has its real part negative? Well, we know for the Euler forward method, the Euler forward method does not pass the test. That is the Euler backward method. Uh, does it do that? Does it, does it pass the test? Well, let's actually look. So we have Zn plus 1 equals Zn plus Ht lambda Zn plus 1. Right? So let me actually put all of the Zn plus 1 on one side, all Zn on the other side, and what I obtain is Zn plus 1 equals 1 over 1 minus Ht, that's Ht my step, times lambda, times Zn. So what I obtain is that Zn is 1 over 1 minus Ht lambda raised to power n. Now what do you think about 1 over 1 minus Ht lambda? Obviously it is more than 1 which means that we have limit of Zn equals zero, which means the Euler backward method is a stable. So you see, you remember at some point in the, you know, when, when we started talking about explicit and implicit method, we said, why would we want to bother with an implicit method which requires to solve uh, an equation when I can just use an explicit method where all I have to do is to plug in my numbers into my ft and just get my zn plus one. Why would I want to do this? Well, here's the answer. You want to do this because it's more stable. By being more stable, it also means you can choose larger uh, steps. So you see the time you spend to solve the equation, which, which is, which is, you know, which is some time. I mean, not, you know, saying it's, it's, it's going this really fast, but I mean, you, you spend some time to solve uh, for the, for, 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 for Zn, for Zn plus one, but you, you will save time by having a larger step. So in the end, um, I'm not saying that implicit method are necessarily better than explicit method, but you can see that they both have advantages that are not exactly at the same place, and it makes sense to actually consider implicit method for this reason. Now, um, 
going back to the earlier remark, we, 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 we had the Euler forward method, which corresponds to computing the integral with the left point rectangle, the Euler backward method, which corresponds to computing the integral with the right point rectangle, and we also see the RK2, which was like doing the midpoint. What would, uh, what would be the method corresponding to uh, the integral with the trapezoid rule? Right, which we know is going to give better results than the rectangles, right? Because obviously uh, you, you get a better approximation if you do a trapezoid than if you do a rectangle. So uh, what would be the method? Uh, at this point, you can do one of two things. You can basically stay with us, and we're going to give the answer in just one second, or you can actually stop the video and try to figure it out by yourself. Uh, it's really up to you. Okay, so let's actually go ahead. Well, the, the method, which will be called Crank-Nicholson, is uh, basically, the, the method will be this one, Zn plus 1 equals Zn, plus the step divided by 2, f of Tn Zn, that's the left uh, point, plus h divided by 2, f of Tn plus 1 Zn plus 1, that's the right point, right? So, the Crank-Nicholson uh, method happens to be a second-order method. And we'll actually prove this in the problem set that, were, that will be assigned to you. So that's something that you will do uh, by hand. The Crank-Nicholson method is, uh, was developed in the middle of the past century, 20th century, uh, by two people, uh, Crank and Nicholson. And uh, it's actually a very efficient method for, because obviously it's uh, going to be of higher order than the Euler method. Now, before we actually conclude this and finish this, this video, I would like to um, mention the Rung Kuta family of methods. And so we're dealing with a, with a, with a, with a family of methods here, and which were developed by uh, Karl Rung and Martin Kuta, uh, the very beginning actually of the 20th century. What's interesting is it was even before we had computers to uh, carry out the computations uh, quickly. So, um, so what did they do? Uh, here is the idea, which again is based on the remark that you know you can in computing of the of the of the integral. Uh, you subdivide your your interval t n t n plus one in s plus one nodes, right? So again, at, at this point, we're looking at what, what happens at, at one step, you know, when, when, when we do one step. So we have tn, tn plus 1. And what we're going to do is divide it in s plus 1 nodes, and somehow we're going to try to guess the value of f at each node using a linear combination of the values of the previous nodes. Okay, and we're going to give weight to these values and then add them up. So obviously based on the number of nodes and based on the linear combination, uh, we're going to get different methods. So the family of explicit Runkuta methods is given by Zn plus 1 equals Zn plus h, and then we have uh, Bi and Ki Tn Zn. Okay? Uh, where the ki's are some functions, basically k1 tx is simply the function f tx, and k2 tx is f of t plus a c a coefficient c2 times h, plus I mean um, so that's on, on the time uh, part, and then on the, uh, on the on the on the on the on the y part if you prefer, on the x part, it's x plus h. And then another coefficient, a2, 1, 2, because it corresponds to the k2, and 1, k1, t, tx. And you see, you keep going this way. So at each, here's for k3, then you do t plus c3h. Okay, so that's, you know, c3 corresponds to 3 of the c, corresponds to the 3 of the k. And then you're actually going to have this uh, a3, 1, a3, 2. a3, 1 corresponds to what happened with the k1 and a3, 2. Which, happen, which happens to the K2, and so on and so forth, okay? So obviously you have a bunch of coefficients here. You have uh, the C's, and you have the A's, and you have the B's, uh, and obviously, um, and oh, by the way, yeah, the KITx, uh, here is the, the complete formula, um, you know, completely clear. Uh, and here are the, the parameters. The parameters is the number of stages of nodes, if you prefer, S. Um, a matrix, the A, I, J, that will be a, a matrix, the weights, B, I, that happen to be on, the, on, that, on that sum, 
and the nodes CI, which, you know, basically you do T plus uh, C1H, C2H, you know, wh where do you put your nodes? How do you, do you put your nodes? Uh, and that's obviously a, a large family of methods because for each uh, parameter, for, for each different parameter, then you're going you're gonna to get a different method, okay? So uh, here's what you get. By the way, uh, usually all these parameters are represented in this way. Often you just have your, your vector C here, your vector B here, and your matrix A. Obviously it's only um, basically a triangular part of the matrix, the rest is, is zero, it doesn't matter, we don't even use it. Uh, so here is, the, is the, 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 all the parameters that are put together in what we call the, the butcher Tableau, um, or, or tableau. I mean, it's, uh, you need to pronounce it the French way because French word, so it's tableau, not tableau. Uh, so you need to work on your pronunciation. Uh, so this uh, this uh, is representation of all the parameters for the Runcuta family of method of methods. And 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 we we have one that we have already uh, discussed. That's the Euler forward method. It is part of the Runcuta family. Uh, and here is the tableau uh, of that uh, Runkuta, uh, of that of that Euler forward method. And obviously the reason is because S is equal to 1, B1 is equal to 1, and C1 is equal to 0, right? And A is not applicable in this case because obviously you just, you just have K1TX, which is FTX, okay? Now, uh, you remember the, you, 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 you may have heard of the RK4, Runkuta 4, that's, that's a very uh, well-known and well-used method. And here is the set of parameters that is used for that method. And that method is very useful. Again, you will see in the problem set why it is so useful, because the order of that method is really, is really nice. Uh, we'll discuss this during the lab sessions. So uh, here is uh, the, 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 the parameters. The, 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 basically, let me spill the beans. Let's, you know, we won't have you waiting until the lab session. It's a fourth order method. method so that's really, uh, that's a really high order method. I mean, you know, if you think about it, it, it really means uh, that if you, if you divide by 10 uh, your step, uh, size, right? You, you, you divide by 10 your step size, you basically divide by 10,000 the error. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's nice, right? So fourth order method. The local duplication error will be uh, obviously uh, ht raised to the power 5 and the total accumulated error will be of order 4. So that is the Runkuta family of method and more specifically the RK4.